All right, folks, welcome back to the channel and to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week I'm playing 1890s Gutty Golf at the oldest public golf course in Connecticut. This is Fenwick Golf Course in Old Saybrook, a really fun nine hole course. It's got a lot of history and several features that date all the way back to the original 1894 layout. This course was designed in three hole stages by J.B. Moore between 1894 and 1896 and played host to the 1898 U.S. Amateur winner, Finlay Douglas, which was a pretty big deal at the time. So here's what's under my arm for this gutty round. Just a handful of clubs that I'll show you as we go, and a McIntyre Braid limited flight ball. So here's a scorecard for Fenwick. It's pretty short, but I'm going to give myself a break and pay homage to the patron saint of hackers, Dr. Frank Stableford, who came up with the Stableford system. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Here's number one, par four, 355 yards. This was my first gutty round of the season, so uh, a little rusty to start. At least I got it off the tee and straight. This club right here is uh, probably my workhorse. This is the 1894 Peter Paxton General Iron, 31 degrees, and I use this uh, for quite a few shots, and you'll see that as the, as the round goes on here. So here's a new club to my gutty set. This is a Cannon Taylor Mashie based on J.H. Taylor's personal Mashie. I really like this club, and I'll talk about this one uh, as we go. Uh, unfortunately, put that shot out of bounds. And I'm back to the Paxton here to try to get myself back into play, but the tree had other ideas. If it looks like I'm going pretty fast here, uh, I am. And uh, it's because the starter was worried that I was going to slow play down with the camera. He said there was a group coming up behind me that was going to have carts and... Uh, so I did my best here to get off the first hole, and uh, the, the group behind me never showed. So I ended up running through this hole for nothing, but um, at least I showed the starter. I was able to do it. Um, but uh, the, the big score here is a good opportunity to talk about the Stableford system. Uh, if this was stroke play, or if I was in an event where this is stroke play, this 10 that I'm about to get on this hole would completely sink my round. Uh, but in Stableford, I can kind of forget about this hole and move on to the next one. And if I get bogey or better, I get points for that. So one point for a bogey, two for par, three for birdie, and so on. Uh, so it's a really nice way to level the playing field between high handicappers and low handicappers. And uh, I figure it'd be a good way for me to tally the scores in these gutty rounds. And there's a real nice tee shot using the McEwen long spoon replica made by Kelly Leonard put me on the front of the green and you notice here that I'm putting for one less than par not a birdie because birdies did not exist yet the, tor the term birdie was not coined until 1903 uh, legend has it at Atlantic City Country Club now this is interesting here I want to show you this again I'm using my Willie Park Jr. Rye Neck putter it's 13 degrees of loft and look what it does when you make contact you're basically chipping when you're on a green. The high loft was designed for obviously greens where it was a, a thicker green than we have today and you needed that extra loft to propel the ball. It's a little harder to get used to on a quicker green but uh, I actually like the stroke that it, that it produces. All right, number three. It's a par three. We're playing this pretty short. They had temporary tees set up because the ground was a little soft in spots. So I'm using the McEwen lofter here and uh, didn't get all of that, so came up short. And this was kind of an awkward shot here. I'm using the lofter once again, but I didn't follow through on that and ended up kind of shanking it. Uh, gave me a better angle into the, the hole here, I guess, but not quite what I wanted to do. So trying to get my tempo and timing down with these clubs. Here I'm using the Willie Park putter off the green and almost put that in. All right, number four, Cove. It's a par four, 322 yards. Using the McEwen Long Spoon once again off the sand tee. And uh, I've played this, this course twice and I've been in this spot both times. I don't know what it is about it, but uh, apparently I like it over here. Here's the Paxton General Iron once again. A little help from the road there to get back up into the fairway. 
Here's the Canon Taylor, Taylor's Mashie once again. This is right in my wheelhouse, this distance. Can swing away on it. And uh, I'm using the braid, the McIntyre braid limited flight ball. So as hard as I hit that ball and, and you know, I struck it clean, it's still not going to go that far. And, and that's just something you got to get used to when you're using the braid. And uh, especially when you're using the McIntyre Park, which is their synthetic gutta percha ball. And I'll be using that in future rounds as well. That was a tricky putt there, and it was really it felt really good to get that one down. All right, number five, hotel, par four, 307 yards. You notice a lot of these holes are pretty short, but uh, when you're playing with the gutty clubs and especially the limited flight ball, uh, you you definitely feel like you need the uh, the break on the distance. Oh, and by the way, I'm up to six Stableford points now. Gone on a little run, last couple holes. There's a nice shot with the Paxton. Yeah, I mean, I figure if if I'm not gonna, you know, challenge gross par on these in these rounds, I may as well find a fun way to keep track of score and how I'm improving or not improving. Um, and Stableford's definitely a nice way to do that for Gutty, uh, keeping track of you know just the strokes, the tally of strokes and feathery is the way I'm doing that, and then. For modern hickory, I'm keeping track of my net score instead of gross. So just some creative ways to, to keep it fun for myself. There's a nice two putt there. Move on to number six now, par three, 135 yards. Before we do, I want to show you the Stuart and Jacoby sand pouch that I'm using. You'll see here, it's a nice buffalo leather and it's the same size as their valuables pouch, but the difference is on the inside. So when you unzip it here, you see that it's lined with a nice water resistant vinyl that keeps water from seeping into the leather um, and it's just super handy. Here's This is Bruce Marquardt's handmade uh, sand tea mold and you just kind of dive the mold in there, get some sand and then uh, you just plunge it out and that's what the tea looks like. So back to the action. 90 yards is what we're playing this hole at. I'm using the Ken Taylor Taylor's Mashie off the tee and uh, unfortunately hit that fat. But it does give me a good opportunity to show you one of the original features to the 1894 layout here. It's this berm that's in front of the green. Um, cool layout feature and uh, ended up using it as a ramp there to get myself up to the top of the green. And uh, the pin placement on this particular day was cool too because this is the part of the green that is the oldest active green in Connecticut on any golf course, public or private. So kind of a cool bit of history there. And that's another Stableford point for me, actually two. All right, moving on to number seven, par four, 249 yards. A nice strike with the McEwen long spoon replica. Just to the right of that first bunker, you see it bouncing there in the fairway. 100 yards to the hole means I'm using the Cannon Taylor Mashie again. That was a real nice strike there. Got a little too much though and went over the green and got caught by this bunker. The bunker shots are a little tricky with the gutty clubs, but uh, so far I've found this technique to work pretty well for me. That's the 45 degree McEwen lofter. And I'm just driving the, the club behind the ball, taking some sand, but uh, you know, just trying to push it out basically. And uh, that was a good, good putt there for a par and three points in Stableford. All right, number eight, par four, 265 yards. This is where the signature green at Fenwick comes into play, and you'll see that in a moment. That was a good drive to start. 130 yards here means I'm using the general iron once again. And that was a good strike too. So I saw the pin tucked behind this picturesque bunker. Uh, but that's a sucker pin. I should have gone to the left and avoided the bunker altogether. But it, of course, I end up going right into the bunker. And uh, this is a bad spot to be in. Not even my McEwen lofter technique is going to get me over that lip 
which is pretty severe. It, you know, it doesn't even show up as severe as it is on the camera or on the video rather. But uh, finally, I was able to get one of them up and out. Still, I guess it was cool. I got to show you that bunker. Like I said, that, this is the signature green complex at Fenwick. And um, this green slopes severely from the back to the front as well, as you see here with this putt. Thought it was going to move a little quicker than that. And then, of course, then I give it too much <laughs> when I'm close to the hole. So that's another big number. But Stableford means I can forget about it and move on to number nine, par five, 453 yards. This is where you really feel the length when you're using gutty clubs and a limited flight ball. And that was a good tee shot there to get me started. Just off on the left side. So the technique I'm using here is uh, what, my, what I'm calling a stinger. It's my own version of a stinger. But basically, I'm putting the ball back in my stance, using the Paxton general iron there, which is 31 degrees, and then I put weight on my left foot. So I'm basically trying to drive a you know, low line drive and then roll out, you know, get the distance by rolling, it, rolling the ball fairway and, and that worked pretty well on that last shot there especially when you've got some slope to the fairway that wasn't the greatest approach shot into the green could have could have done better than that and then uh, hit that a little fat as well so still I'm really pretty happy with the, the three shots that got me up to the middle of the, or got me into that approach. Two shots in a row where I used that Paxton Stinger just how I wanted. And overall, pretty satisfied with my first gutty round of the season. So that'll wrap it up here from Fenwick. Let's take a look at the scorecard real quick. Gross score of 53 and a net of 41. Obviously that 10 on number one and the nine on number eight hurt me. And here's my Hickory Hacker Gutty Golf Index. Stableford, I got 15 points this round, so we'll keep track of that going forward and see how I do. So that'll do it for this week. Thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe. Here's a video for you to check out from my archive, and I'll be back next week with another video. Until then, take care, folks.